Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Professor Fishman, uh, as you noted in your testimony, Congress's failure to adequately fund ESA, uh, ESA work is hampering species recovery efforts. Uh, do any of the bills before us today increase the chances of recovering threatened or endangered species? Question one. Is there, and to follow up on that, is there a way to ensure better conservation outcomes, better species recovery and, pro and protection uh, under ESA without any additional funding? Uh, I, I can't say that any of the six bills the committee is considering today would uh, would would it, as as, a, as the, the the bills in their entirety promote recovery. I think there are some good ideas in the bills that promote cooperation, and I think that we can all agree that a cooperative process is at least a less expensive way of addressing recovery needs. Um, a lot of the great uh, recovery credit systems, area-wide planning systems that uh, do a good job for species recovery are voluntary, but voluntary in the sense that they're negotiated in the shadow of a somewhat more draconian outcome if the parties don't agree. So sometimes it's useful to have the drastic threats, if you will, of the Endangered Species Act in order to promote voluntary agreements. There certainly is more that um, agencies uh, could do and that Congress could do without additional appropriations, but I do think there is a bit of a trade-off. Uh, there are costs to many of the recovery challenges for endangered species, and if the federal government, if Congress isn't appropriating funds for that, then who bears those costs? Well, it's usually states or private landowners. Um, I think that um, flexible area-wide plans, uh, such as the ones that are memorialized in 4D rules, like the one for the California coastal gnat catcher in San Diego County, um, the one for the lesser prairie chicken, are a good approach. Uh, as I said in my oral testimony, I think that uh, we'd be better off having those kinds of plans before a species is listed when there is more flexibility. The larger the area, the larger the population, the more room there is for trade-offs. Um, there are other programs outside of the Endangered Species Act that could uh, uh, prevent species from declining to the brink of extinction that could be enhanced without great additional appropriations. Uh, the National Wildlife Refuge System, for instance, has, uh, a, as one of its major missions to uh, preserve ecosystems of the United States. Uh, uh, absent uh, monies for appropri appropriation, appropriating new habitat, there certainly is existing public land that could be dedicated to refuges to avoid future listings or provide habitat I was gonna, for existing species. Professor, I was going to, uh, let me go back to a point that you made in part of the answer. Uh, we've heard a lot today about state efforts and how, whether it's the credit process we heard about, um, that states uh, know best uh, through their commissioners, through the state land departments, uh, how to best protect species and, and deal with its revival if necessary. Would a lot of these efforts, and I don't know if it's quanti you can quantify it, probably not, would a lot of these efforts have occurred, and you mentioned that without this looming threat, for lack of a better word, of more drastic legal action regarding ESA and, and what those kinds of court decisions and or administrative decisions would have ended up being. I, I see, it, did it prod or it was just the goodness in the heart of those particular people to do it that way? Well, it's certainly an incentive. And I think historically, if you look at the major uh, compromises, the major uh, trade-off plans, uh, whether it be in the uh, Pacific Northwest for lake successional habitat for the northern spotted owl or in Southern California for the California gnat catcher, they occurred with the uh, looming hammer of the Endangered Species Act that parties sought to be avoided. At the same time, I think for many species, recovery is impossible unless states are on board. So uh, there's a need for compromise on both sides. 
Regarding the litigation legislation, the limits constitutionally in terms of public access, the public's right to know, what does this litigation in your mind affect those things? I, I don't understand your question. I don't have an opinion on the constitutionality of those aspects of the bill. I would say as a researcher and scholar, I am in favor of more transparency. I would like to know more about settlements. I would like to know more about the costs. I think that my concern is that a sunshine law could get turned into a shutdown law if it results in uh, making uh, settlements more burdensome. That, that's going to create a lot of problems in terms of expenses for the United States and in terms of uh, providing the resources necessary okay. to litigate thank cases. You, I thank the, uh, thank the gentleman. The chair recognizes the gentleman.